The Principles of Peak Performance How to Move from Ordinary to Extraordinary. If you think that life's a roller coaster, full of a few big highs followed by a succession of gut churning drops, then I fully understand your point of view. I've been there too. Anyone meeting me for the first time today wouldn't have a clue about my journey to this point. Today, I live an extraordinary life full of outstanding accomplishments but only because I have very consciously made it that way. I'm fitter, stronger, and healthier than I've ever been. I'm completely and unwaveringly focused on creating a significant positive impact in the world. I love what I do every single day, and by living my life guided by extraordinary habits, rituals, and standards, I've become among the best in the world at what I do. Things haven't always been this way in my life, Growing up as a kid and young adult was tough. My mother is the strongest woman I've ever met. Yet when I was 10 years old, my two younger siblings and I were a breath away from a life of foster care as she struggled to find a way of affording to look after us. I feared school, supposedly a daily sanctuary from problems at home, thanks to severe and persistent bullying. Unsurprisingly, my experiences sculpted my mind into believing that life just wasn't fair. I had no confidence either in myself or in anyone else and lacked any sense of certainty in my life. I was a victim, everything was unjust and I cultivated a hard negative mindset. Sport was my escape hatch. From the age of seven, it gave me some measure of control over my life. I started out playing rugby and went on to try my hand at many other disciplines, including surfing, roller hockey, and by the time I was 12, a particular talent for cycling committed me to my bike. But while this might have become my route into a more stable state of mind, a year later, my life turned upside down. I came back home from winning a race with my team to find the police at my door. My dad, who had grown increasingly unhealthy, unbalanced, and unhappy in the life that he had created for himself, had decided he could no longer take any more and chose suicide as the least bad option available to him. Even now, the image of this moment is burnt into my memory. Eventually, sport wasn't enough for me, and I started looking elsewhere for my kicks. By the end of my teens... I ditched cycling for nightclubs and reimagined myself as a DJ. Once again, this was a very good way of feeling good while avoiding difficult truths. My early 20s were a time living a full-on hedonistic lifestyle and all that entails. Anything to distract me from what was really going on inside. In retrospect, a crash was inevitable and naturally enough, it came while I was away from home. At the highest point of my DJ career, I found myself in an upmarket hotel in Riga, Latvia, where I just played at the biggest club in town. Rather than being euphoric, I was utterly depressed, blind drunk, and aimlessly pouring money away at the casino blackjack table. Then I had a sudden flash forward. Fortunately for me, this was the moment I woke up to the bleakness of my future and wondered where I was going so wrong. This was a crossroads, and I knew I had to make a choice. Sort my life out right now, or end up following the same destructive path as my dad. And from that moment, everything changed. I engaged a coach, and I spent a long 15 months changing my habits and daily rituals one by one. It wasn't about simply waving a wand and magically all my problems went away. It required commitment, hard work, and sometimes an acceptance of an occasional failure along the path. But slowly, bit by bit, this effort began the process of changing my own perception of my life. I raised my standards and over time became a better version of myself. The transformation in my life and my thinking processes from who I was before up to that moment in Riga to who I became after was extreme, to say the least. Having gone through it myself, I was struck by the sad realization that had my dad been exposed to the same level of guidance and positive influence that I had been lucky enough to experience, 
it may well have saved his life. And that's the reason I'm here, doing what I do today. I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to guiding and supporting others to work through and overcome their issues, achieve incredible personal breakthroughs they don't even know they're capable of, and become the very best version of themselves. Because I don't want anyone to ever end up feeling as choiceless as my dad. Over the following decade, I invested all my time and money into studying human behavior and personal performance with the aim of getting at the truth of why we do what we do, our personal motivations, and of understanding the definitive steps involved in attaining personal transformation and peak performance. As a result of my detailed research, I've become a sought-after expert for CEOs, celebrities, and even Olympic gold medalists. People who are already at the top of their field, but who believe they can do even more if they get the right guidance. I'm able to share with them many success principles that I discovered were valuable through my own life transformational journey, subsequently reinforced by my extensive studies. At the core, I've identified the 10 crucial elements that are essential for positive change and now I'm sharing them with you too in this book of strategies for peak performance, health, and happiness. I can tell you with absolute conviction that when you follow these steps wholeheartedly and incorporate these principles and rituals into your daily life until they become ingrained habits, you too will live a truly extraordinary life. This is your checklist for a better life. How you do anything is how you do everything. Win your morning. The first and easiest thing you can do is ditch your alarm clock snooze button. Stop using it and forget it exists. It's essential that you start by greeting the day with positivity. So how can you do that if you're already admitting defeat and can't be bothered to even get going? The just nine more minutes approach to delaying your day isn't generating the sort of energy that allows you to attack each moment. Putting your alarm clock on the other side of the room and forcing yourself to get up doesn't count either. This isn't the right reason for being upright. Attitude is always crucial to peak performance, and your attitude in those first few seconds of the day sets the tone for everything that follows. Leap out of bed. That's not a figure of speech. I actually want you to leap out of bed. Each day you wake up is a blessing. As the saying goes, if you're still breathing, then there's more right with you than there is wrong with you. By the time my feet hit the floor, I'm already thinking about what I'm grateful for, and you should be doing the same. Put a note on your alarm clock that reminds you to start by saying thank you every single morning. And with practice, you're already going a long way towards creating a positive mindset for whatever the day brings. Once you're up, it's time to put yourself first. If you usually start your day by running around frantically, trying to get showered, eat some toast and get in the car within 30 minutes, then I urge you to reconsider. Make a choice and get up early so you can dedicate space to your own well-being. I begin every morning by taking an hour to exercise, both physically and mentally, read and set out my goals for the coming day. This isn't a chore. It's a beautiful time that I commit to for myself. Once you get into the habit of cultivating this choice, it's a period you'll look forward to and come to cherish. Even if you have to be up early for your first appointment of the day or because you have a journey ahead of you, don't miss out. You know when you sat the night before calculating just how late you can get away with staggering out of bed? Instead of thinking, how fine can I cut it? Consider what would be a nice calm length of time to gather and prepare myself. And then get up 15 minutes earlier than that. Why? Because now you've made a personal choice. You've started the day on your own terms. This is a very powerful tool. It changes your perception from the outset. And in this case, one simple act puts you in control of your life rather 
than letting your life control you. Here's a great technique for starting your day with energy and gentle dynamism. Get yourself a rebounder. These small trampolines or trampettes as they are sometimes called aren't just for kids in the back garden. They're a fun way to get yourself going in the morning and there's so much more to it than just putting a smile on your face. You can use a rebounder which doesn't have to be expensive or you can jump lightly up and down on the spot wherever you are and practice deep breathing to help you lymphocyze. Lymphocyzing activates and stimulates your lymphatic system. Developing a healthy lymph system which supports the absorption of nutrients into your cells and aids the removal of toxins and other waste products is one of the most important steps you can take to create wellness. Stimulating your lymphatic system through daily movement is vital for your overall health. This is an exercise for all ages and abilities. It isn't about propelling yourself higher and higher on your trampoline until you eventually put your head through the ceiling. Instead, bounce gently on the surface and breathe deeply by filling your lungs full of air and then emptying them as much as possible. Continue this process for 5 to 10 minutes every morning to create an abundance of energy in your body, ready to take charge of your day. Have an attitude of gratitude. Getting out of bed and saying thank you is really important for framing your day. I now do this as naturally as brushing my teeth or taking a shower, but don't worry if it takes you a while to get into the habit. That's absolutely to be expected. It took plenty of time and patient effort on my part too. Like everything in this book, the key is to keep moving forward and doing your best. Of course, you're not going to be an expert after a few days, weeks, or even months. But if you throw your hands in the air after a week, exclaim that you'll never be able to manage it, and then even give up, you have zero chance of success. Slowly, little by little, this stuff will start to stick as long as you remain open to it and keep practicing. And if you're waiting for that day when you're suddenly perfect at everything, then prepare to stay waiting a very long time. No one's perfect, but that shouldn't stop you from doing your best every single day. Once I'm up, I drink a glass of fresh lemon water or two large glasses of water when I'm traveling and don't have access to fresh lemons and spend time focusing on everything that I'm grateful for. It's the ideal chance to express gratitude for all the special people in my life, the wealth of opportunities I've had, the fabulous people I've been fortunate enough to work with, and every challenge I've been through, however tough, that shaped me into the person I am today. I have no doubt you have a long list of people and events you can be thankful for too, even if your first response is to struggle to recollect any of them. Through the course of each day, you're constantly making choices, tiny little easy ones and great big meaty difficult ones. Some of these choices you'll be aware of making, but many of them will hardly register in your consciousness. All of them will have some effect on how you live your life. One choice you can consciously make is to invest your energy in focusing either on what's going wrong in your life and the things you don't have, or what's going right, what's working in your favor, and what you do already have. This might sound easier said than done, but I promise you that, with practice, by actively choosing to think about the positives, you'll gradually cultivate a mindset that'll keep you on course, even during what you feel are the darkest days. There are 1,440 minutes in a day, And if you regularly spend just five of them, that's a tiny 0.34% of any 24-hour period, concentrating on positivity and thankfulness, then you'll come to reap the benefits as you train your mind into becoming your friend rather than your enemy. There's so much more good in your life than you probably realize, and the simple act of writing is almost certainly more powerful than you think. It's a well-established fact that writing something down 
imprints it more firmly into your subconscious mind and makes you more likely to remember it. That's why it's an excellent idea to keep a daily gratitude journal. Spend a few moments jotting down things that you're thankful for. These can be anything at all. Don't get hung up trying to look for enormous life-changing events all the time. Maybe the traffic lights were in your favor today. Perhaps someone made you a cup of tea. Possibly the sun peaked from behind a cloud on a cold November day. Write down as many as you can find. Soon you will have a book that's full of entirely happy incidents and a mind that is more attuned to looking out for them. And if you want to really accelerate the benefits of writing a gratitude journal, say your thanks out loud as well. Positive note-taking, especially combined with finding your voice, is one of the most powerful methods available to you for changing your state and shifting your focus. Don't put it off. Start now. Are you up for a brief challenge? Okay, good. Keep reading this paragraph and as you do, transform your face by summoning the biggest, broadest smile you can imagine. It doesn't matter if there's someone else around. Just do it. Can you feel it pulling at your cheeks and taking over your thinking? Perfect. Now, quickly try to focus on a negative thought and keep smiling. It's difficult to come up with anything, isn't it? Almost impossible, I'd say. When you smile, you automatically create positive emotions throughout your body. You just can't help yourself. If you can establish your emotional home as a happy, smiley place, then you'll have a big impact on your overall quality of life. It's not only you who will benefit either. Smiling has measurable benefits for everyone around you too. And it's free. Who wouldn't want to improve their own happiness and the happiness of everyone around them without spending a thing? It's a really infectious, pleasurable activity that I urge you to keep repeating for the good of all. By the way, you can relax your grin now, but only if you want to. Practice mindfulness. Have you ever considered how much time you spend thinking? It's common to find that your mind is whirring away constantly, whether at work or when you're spending time trying to relax. It can be really frustrating to wonder why you can't ever switch off. Equally, if you stopped and analyzed every thought you're having, you might be shocked to find out how many of your thoughts are about past experiences or future expectations. You only exist in this one moment, so why spend so much time reflecting on what's already been or gone or preparing for, often characterized as worrying about what is yet to happen? Especially as this often means wandering through the present in an almost zombie-like state, not appreciating your only actual reality. Mindfulness and meditation provides an opportunity to observe your thought processes and bring yourself back to the here and now, where you can be part of the only life you're having. Through focusing on your breathing, you're often able to experience greater perspective, calmness and clarity by purposefully centering your mind and body. As you develop your technique over time, it becomes possible to practice mindfulness every day, both formally and informally, as you sit, walk, and work. It isn't about trying to block your thoughts. Instead, you're simply taking note and observing whatever passes through your mind with present moment compassion to yourself as things arise. Being mindful also benefits from connecting with nature. Wherever you are in the world right now, whatever concrete jungle you're surrounded by, there is nature around you. Whether it's a tough green weed poking up through a crack in the tarmac pavement, a silhouetted bird turning in the sky above you, or a spider's web that shows up under a windowsill on a misty October morning, take time to notice it. 
In most cases, even if you work in the center of a city, there's likely to be at least a small patch of green somewhere nearby. Take 10 minutes to explore it or just go sit in it, perhaps during your lunch break, and soak up whatever it brings to your senses. There is poetry in the waving of uncut grass on a cold afternoon. You'll be amazed at how much this brief connection with the natural world can separate you from stress and lead you to experience things differently. Remember, whatever it is that you do with your days, you too are a part of nature. I run events all over the world, and it's no accident that I hold these events in some of the most fabulous outdoor locations you can imagine. It's in these places and these moments that I find I'm most inspired and creative and can access that great clarity. So on your way to work in the morning, don't rush through the park with your head down, worrying about the meetings you've got later that afternoon. Slow down, look up, look around and take in what you see. With practice, I bet that afternoon meeting goes better as a result. Another aspect of acting mindfully might seem the simplest task of all, but in reality, it requires greater attention than you might ever realize. I'm talking about breathing. Yes, you do it maybe 20 times a minute every minute without ever noticing. But do you spot all of the times you do it differently? For example, if it's your turn to stand up and give a presentation to your team, do you ever pick up that your breathing changes in that instant, at least until you get into flow? It's extremely normal that in situations your mind views as potentially stressful, it commands your body to take quicker, shallower breaths. If you're not aware, then you're not in control of your body at this point. And it becomes a problematic spiral as shallow breathing itself creates less oxygen and leads to greater stress and anxiety. When you breathe in, your stomach should rise. When you breathe out, your stomach should fall. Not your chest, your stomach. Your chest is where all that constricting tightness occurs as breathing becomes more rapid and less full. Watch a baby breathing and you'll see what I mean about the natural flow of breath through your body. The more you ensure that you fill your body full of life by filling your lungs full of air, the more you can practice reducing day-to-day and situational stress. Move. Without realizing that you're doing it, it's very easy to end up living your life in a series of little boxes. You eat and sleep in a box. You travel in a box. You work in a box. More often than not, there's nothing else other than these boxes, day after day, year after year. Get out of the box. Movement is one of the three critical things you're designed to do, along with eating and sleeping. Disrupt your regular box-to-box routine by making time to move, increase your fitness, and improve your health. Don't overcomplicate it, though. Improving health is one of the simplest, cheapest things you can do to accelerate your peak performance. Don't be drawn into or bamboozled by all the fashionable diets, gadgets, and cheats that will supposedly make you healthier with little effort. There's a lot more expensive marketing out there than effective shortcuts. Establishing a good level of health can be straightforward. Start by making sure you take part in some kind of physical activity every day. Take a walk or ride a bike to work. Go for a swim. Play football with your friends. Do whatever it takes to include movement in your life on a daily basis and be sure to do it in a way that works for you. Physical activity should be pleasurable. You're not going to keep choosing to do it if you always find it a drag. If 45 minutes on a treadmill becomes your own version of hell, then stop. Find something else to do that you enjoy. Maybe you'll rediscover your love of running if you join a club and head out as a group. 
Clubs welcome people of all ages and abilities. They're not just for the pro athletes. Exercise shouldn't be a bolt-on that you squeeze in between having fun because you think you must or you should. Instead, it's an opportunity to do something enjoyable for yourself. Plus, it has all sorts of documented positive impacts on both your physical and mental state, including depression and motivation, that no amount of time spent surfing the web on your phone will ever produce for you. It's worth understanding that there are four main types of physical training you can choose to perform. Number one, high-intensity interval training. Number two, strength and conditioning training. Number three, flexibility and mobility training. And number four, slow, long-duration cardiovascular training. If it's fat loss and maintaining good cardiovascular fitness that you're targeting, high-intensity interval training, otherwise known as HIT, is the most effective exercise group for you. HIT involves alternating between relatively quick bursts of high-energy anaerobic effort and low-energy activity over a short period. Repeated exposure to this sort of exercise has clear and demonstrated effects on fat burning and overall fitness and well-being. Strength and conditioning work is crucial for injury prevention and general longevity. It's important to incorporate this into your day at any age, but especially so as you move into later life. Prevention is better than cure, so if you want to stay away from most of the aches, pains, and other ailments that the majority of the population fall foul of at one time or another, making time to develop your strength and conditioning will give you a much better chance. Greater flexibility can be achieved through all kinds of perfectly standard, easy, and enjoyable activities such as hiking and swimming. Yoga, though, is incredibly effective in this respect. I thoroughly recommend incorporating a daily practice of yoga into your life, especially in the morning, as it helps you wake up your body and sets you up for the day ahead. If you're new to yoga, Don't expect to be able to put your feet behind your head. Most people never even come close to that sort of extreme movement, and neither do you need to. Yoga is about stretching and breathing within the safe confines of your body and what it's capable of doing. You should always listen to your body as you move, safely judging the edge of your ability and never attempting to push yourself too far beyond it. I have a 10-minute morning yoga routine that I perform as part of my daily rituals. I always feel amazing afterwards. Alkalize. You might like to drink a glass of fresh lemon water as soon as you wake up, as I do. Some studies suggest that too much acidity in the body creates many different types of health challenges, from fatigue and obesity, and potentially up to much greater health issues and diseases. One of your body's highest priorities is to make sure that the alkalinity through your organs and your body remains at a stable level that's able to continue supporting cellular life. Although, as you know, lemon in itself is acidic, by combining it with water and ingesting the resultant drink, it's believed to turn the water alkaline in your system. It also tastes good and it's a refreshing way to start your day, particularly at a time after sleep when you're likely to be more dehydrated than normal. Most health experts recommend consuming 6 to 8 glasses of liquid per day, and ideally this should be mostly water and largely free of caffeine. So making an early start on this recommendation will make hydration easier. Depleted energy and inadequate hydration are key reasons for experiencing all sorts of problems such as stress, fatigue, depression, and disease. Starting the day in the right way will give you a better chance of staying in balance. Lemon water is very simple to make. Simply take a glass of water, which can be cold or warm depending on your personal preference, and squeeze half a lemon into it. Some people believe that the nutrients in the outer peel and the inner white layer are also beneficial, so you can add the spent lemon shell into the glass of water if you wish. 
You may also choose to drink some form of green juice every day. Health practitioners advise that live green foods make your body alkaline and stabilize your blood sugar levels. By drinking a fresh green juice every day, you may be helping your body in a number of ways, including working towards optimum levels of alkalinity. Additionally, fresh green vegetable drinks are a fantastic way of satisfying your sweet cravings. It's also widely held that people sometimes mistake thirst for hunger too. So, before you reach for that chocolate bar, the moment you feel like a sugary snack, consider trying a green juice or even a lemon water first. You might just find that it's exactly what you needed and over time reduce your dependency on high calorie refined sugar alternatives. Indeed, I actually aim to consume live green plant-based foods as 80% of my overall diet, something you may wish to target as well. Fuel your body. Whether you're an omnivore, pescatarian, vegan, or anything else, I strongly recommend eating natural foods in their most natural form. This is because nutrition, like health, doesn't need to be complicated. Unfortunately, many self-appointed experts make it more complicated than it needs to be. Author and food campaigner Michael Pollan sums it up neatly in the first seven words of his book, In Defense of Food, and Eater's Manifesto. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. A simple and helpful rule of thumb is to be sure that the food you eat is recognizably from the land, earth, sky, or sea. If your food has been processed to the extent that it no longer resembles anything that you can clearly discern, and if you're unsure of its origin, it may be a good moment to question what you're eating and why. Consuming food that looks like it originated from nature and that you know exactly what and where it came from is an excellent way to improve your peak performance. Better still is to make sure that you're eating natural food in its most natural form possible. For example, a can of tomatoes with no other additives is a natural food, but a vine of fresh tomatoes from the green grocer is natural food in its natural form. It's as straightforward as that. I try to think of foods having an A to F rating, like a school report. At the top of the scale, you have the A's, natural food in its most natural form. At the bottom, the F's, you have highly processed, pre-prepared, takeaway and packaged junk food. You know the sort of thing I mean. Every time you head to the supermarket for your weekly shop or visit a restaurant for a nice meal out, do your best to stick as closely as you can to the natural A foods. I understand that time and availability means that you don't always have access to the purest, most natural foods. But if you can keep in mind and do your best at all times, you know you're going to do well. For something like 90% of our shared history, humans sourced all their food from hunting and gathering. This means our ancestors killed and collected meats, fish, nuts, seeds, berries, fruits, and vegetables. There was no refined sugar or processed foods to be found in their diet. Then, the first agricultural revolution began to move humans from hunter-gatherers to farmers. In the 20th century, the second agricultural revolution helped by mechanization, saw the Western world process much more food. Some commentators believe that humans never adjusted to the explosion of processed grains such as bread, pasta, and rice-based meals that emerged after these revolutions. Much of the natural food in natural form that had been previously consumed was replaced, and this affected many facets of mental and physical health and well-being. To get the best out of your diet, think of yourself more like a hunter-gatherer. Sugar occurs naturally in many foods in their natural states, especially fruit. This pure, unprocessed form should be your only sugar intake. And even then, be aware of how much fruit you're eating. This food group is often characterized by high sugar and high calorific content, 
So anyone on a fat loss program should strictly limit their consumption. Sugar causes energy spikes and crashes in your body. So you're constantly fluctuating between high and low states. This is the exact opposite of peak performance. Also, if sugar isn't burned as energy immediately through some form of intense physical activity, it turns into fat and generates a whole host of new additional problems for your body to manage. So, as far as you can, I strongly recommend cutting out sugar, grains, and processed foods. Your optimum balanced diet is a mixture of grass-fed meats, poultry, fish, eggs, vegetables, pure oils, nuts, seeds, and, in moderation, fruit. Saying that, however, I am actually 100% on a plant-based diet. But I won't go into that here as it's a personal choice of mine and I don't want to be preaching veganism or plant-based diets in this book. I'm aware that most people still eat animal products. So for those of you who do, stick to the above. If you're vegetarian or vegan, look closely at the nutrients you may be low on, such as iron or protein that often come from meat and fish and find natural ways to replace them. Leafy green vegetables are excellent sources of iron and beans, peas and nuts are ideal for getting your protein intake. Begin the day by eating a healthy breakfast. Your mother likely told you this and you very likely rolled your eyes at the cliché, but she was right. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. When you fall asleep at night, your body essentially operates on low power, eco mode. Through this nocturnal fasting, your metabolism is lowered, and in the morning, it's crucial that you break that fast. Doing so wakes up your metabolism and kickstarts your body's natural fat-burning abilities. It's a very sound idea to replace a low-quality, sugary cereal breakfast with a high-protein, green vegetables and healthy fats alternative. Straight away, you'll be setting yourself up for the day without that early morning sugar rush that's then followed by a juddering, crushing sugar low around mid-morning that makes you crave that chocolate bar and reduces your effectiveness. Instead, you're providing sustained energy that helps you through the morning. If you're a visual person, then it might help you to think of your metabolism as a steam train. In order to keep the engine running, it needs a constant, relatively even supply of slow-burning fuel. If you fill it full of paper and small sticks at the start of the journey, then it might run for a short while before quickly slowing down and demanding that you feed it with more energy. Fast, slow, fast, slow. Instead, if you regularly shovel a small quantity of long-lasting coals into the fire, then the train will run much further and at a much more even pace. Your metabolism benefits from exactly the same approach to food. By eating regularly, by which I mean every few hours, you're not only helping maximize your body's potential to burn unwanted fat, but you're much more able to sustain positive, consistent energy levels throughout the course of your day. If you're used to eating two or three meals per day, probably alongside the occasional sugary snack, then adapting to this new routine requires patience. At first, you'll be likely to find that you're more hungry more often. But don't worry, this isn't a bad outcome. Because you're taking in more fuel, just like the steam engine, your metabolism is speeding up. As long as you continue to keep the promise you've made to your body by eating small portions of food at regular intervals, your metabolism will remain in its raised state. As a result, your energy levels stay high and you'll find that you lose unwanted body fat as well. An important fact to remember about nutrition is that you eat food for fuel, not for amusement. This might sound like a truly depressing thought to you and make you see me as some kind of straight-faced killjoy, but that isn't my intention. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat nice food or savor and enjoy preparing a meal, 
But when you're constructing that meal, it's worth bearing in mind that you're responsible for giving your body and brain what they need when you eat. Dinner is a prime example of how it's possible to forget that food is fuel and do your body a disservice. So many people hastily throw together far too much for dinner, much too late in the day. If you're thinking properly about the needs of your body, breakfast should be one of the largest meals of your day, if not the largest, and dinner should be the smallest. That's because if you eat a big meal in the evening, you're taking food into your stomach at a time when you'll soon be in bed and your body clock is about to slow your metabolism down at night. Consequently, the unused energy from that food you've consumed just gets stored in the stomach area. This storage problem is exacerbated the later you eat. I advise you to eat a small dinner meal at least two to three hours before you lie down for sleep. I do my best to not eat any food after 7 p.m. in the evening. Eating too late will sabotage whatever good efforts you've made during the day, as any fuel that isn't burnt gets stored as fat within your body. And if you're doing the same thing every evening, then no matter what you're doing during the day, you're adding fat overnight, literally in your sleep, time and time again. It's a frustration that many people feel, despite believing that they're following a positive, fat-burning daily diet. It isn't just food that fuels your body, of course. Hydration is an enormously important part of maintaining optimal health. Approximately 70% of your body and 80% of your brain is made up of water, so you have a big stake in staying hydrated. As such, you should aim to drink two to three liters, predominantly of water, each and every day, even more if you're an athlete. Dehydration leads to classic avoidable symptoms such as stress, anxiety, and feelings of being overwhelmed that you might not necessarily equate to a lack of liquid. If you're feeling any of these sensations, then make sure that one of your first actions is to go drink a glass of water. It may be exactly what you need. Make regularly sipping water a central part of your efforts to give your body the fuel it requires so that your body can give back to you the energy and vitality that you require to consistently stay at the top of your performance. Cut out poisons. Flour, potatoes, dairy products, rice, and grains. These products all belong to a group known as white foods. And if you're serious about improving and maintaining your abilities, I suggest you do without them. I promise you that if you cut out these foods and follow the other nutritional advice in the preceding chapter, you will automatically begin to shed unwanted excess fat and become a healthier version of you. Doing so is not just great for your body, it's an established method of increasing your self-confidence and mental prowess too. Start the process of removing these products from your diet with a bang by giving away whatever bread you have left. Start with a clean slate and work towards eliminating every one of these items listed above. You can replace the bread and indeed other white foods that you're missing by eating useful whole foods like nuts. And white foods is just a term, an easy way of referring to this group. It doesn't include things like cauliflower or mushrooms, which are still worthwhile eating, even as part of a nutritionally balanced diet. I've already discussed the perils of consuming too much sugar, but this doesn't only extend to quitting chocolate bars and limiting the amount of fruit you munch. It requires you to watch what you drink as well. Clearly, if you're adding spoonfuls of white sugar to hot drinks, then it's well documented that you need to stop for a myriad of health reasons. But you also need to wean yourself of sugary cold drinks, and they're artificially sweetened diet versions too. You might be surprised to find out how much sugar and sweetener there is in prepackaged drinks. And I don't just mean the famous fizzy brands either. 
Although behind its familiar red label, the most famous brand of all conceals a staggering 53 grams of sugar in every 500 ml bottle. Juice-based drinks, for example, may be marketed as healthy, but these also often contain high amounts of naturally occurring and artificially added sweeteners. Don't be fooled by these so-called healthy diet or light drinks, which in many respects may be even worse for you than their original sugar-based versions. You may be surprised to learn that sugar, along with a number of other chemicals added in the mix, have been found to not just promote fat storage and diabetes, two of the major rapidly growing health challenges facing the Western world today, but even possibly loss of intelligence. It is in your best interest to cut these out of your intake immediately. Choose water instead. Water is the basis of every animal's life, including humans. Would you ever consider filling your dog's drinking bowl with lemonade? I hope not. You can make your own water taste even better by adding some fresh lemon, which may also aid your alkalizing process. If you're drinking regularly, then you shouldn't often feel thirsty. But if you do, head to the tap and pour out a glass of water to drink. And while you're there, fill up a reusable bottle to carry around with you too, so that you're not tempted to reach for a sugary alternative when you're out and about. You'll be doing yourself and your life a big favor in the long run. Cut out poisons. Kick out, or at very least, cut down the toxins that are quietly ruining your performance in nearly every aspect of your life. These dangerous pollutants include nicotine, drugs, chemicals, alcohol, and stress. I don't need to give you the well established details about why cigarettes and drugs are slowly killing you. You know just how toxic they are for your mind, body, and general health already. And if you're a user of either, you know full well that you absolutely need to stop. I shouldn't really need to tell you about the pitfalls of alcohol either, but it's amazing how many people gloss over the effects of booze, seeing it instead in terms of its short-term, seemingly beneficial release, perhaps at the end of a hectic day. Alcohol is probably the main toxin that most people are consuming on the most regular basis. If you drink, what you're turning a blind eye to is the knock-on effect it has on every part of your life. I'm not telling you that you must never, ever drink. But if you choose to consume alcohol, you must do so fully aware of its impact every time you take a sip. My honest personal opinion is that the odd smoke of a cigarette is fine and the odd drink here and there to relax or celebrate something special is great. Anything more than that is doing you more harm than good. It's not what we do every now and then that defines us. It's what we do consistently. If you're drinking and smoking every day, you're in trouble. I'm not talking about alcoholism, but casual drinking. Even small amounts have been shown to decrease your motivation, lower your energy levels, and affect your ability to focus. A few units at a time, which is all that doctors mean when they talk about excess alcohol consumption, help develop depression and weight gain. It is a fact that regular casual drinking will lead to changes in your mood and energy and excess fat around your waist. When you see people who look good all over the rest of their body, but who have a disproportionately large belly, this is almost always the result of excessive alcohol consumption. There is little or no nutritional value whatsoever in alcoholic drinks. If you think back to the mantra of food is fuel, there is no reason to even pick up a glass of wine or a bottle of beer. They simply contain empty calories, which, as a result, are stored as excess belly fat. Therefore, if you drink and you're unhappy with your current body weight, you need to stop drinking right away. You'll be shocked by the difference that single change will make to your body shape. Of course, if you choose to stop, 
And don't forget, everything you do should be a proactive choice for a positive reason. It doesn't have to be forever. Once you achieve the body goal you set for yourself and have attained the flat stomach you always wanted, you're welcome to celebrate with the occasional drink. Just make sure that thereafter, it's always done in moderation and with your eyes open to the consequences. Another toxin I listed was stress. And this is one that is often ignored by most people. You can't control every single thing that happens to you. But you do have a fair amount of control over some of the self-created conditions for stress. Right now, if you're feeling stressed, you might smoke a cigarette, go for a pint, or eat a takeaway pizza. You do this in the belief that it'll help you relax and unwind from whatever has caused you the emotional state. But actually, you're doing the exact opposite. Instead of de-stressing you, these perceived quick fixes are in fact adding to your stress, raising your heart rate, increasing your cortisol levels, and winding you up rather than winding you down. The best way to deal with stress is through exercise. Regular exercise is an essential part of your life that should be a daily pleasure, not a weekly chore. Make exercise and daily movement non-negotiable. Finding a fun way to get moving not only benefits your body, but also improves your mind and reduces your stress levels, helping you feel better about yourself. So, if you're stressed out today, go back and read chapter 4 to explore the biggest benefit to your routine. It has the power to change the way you feel and live. Live a balanced life. If your goal is to be good, whatever that means, 100% of the time, then you're setting yourself up for certain failure. Instead, keep in mind the famous principle that can be usefully applied to so many things, the 80-20 rule. Set yourself a target of living by your new life rules 80% of the time. As a result, you'll give yourself the space to be human and not put too much pressure on yourself to be the perfect, infallible, unattainable being. As I've described, some of the often short-term pleasures in life just aren't healthy or sustainable. That doesn't mean that you should never be allowed to enjoy them. If you end up ordering the occasional takeaway or heading out with friends for what turns out to be a crazy night on the town, don't beat yourself up about it. What would that achieve anyway, apart from making you feel worse? There's no point in piling on the agony. You are what you are, and you did what you did. One of the greatest achievements you'll ever accomplish in your life is to always be kind to yourself and to let go of any frustration at your own actions. Have fun, and if you fall off the wagon, Get back on as soon as you can. Our life is made up of our decisions. If you decide to let go of your peak performance habits for a moment or a day, make a decision the next morning to rectify your situation rather than drowning in your guilt and misery and get back to your best self by doing something extraordinary. Go for a long run or hit the gym. Everything is a choice. That's why aiming for the 80% goal is more realistic and gives you the room to get the balance right. Enjoyed only every now and then, a guilty pleasure can rarely be just a pleasure. Unless you're in training for the Olympics next month. If you're predominantly doing a good job of staying healthy, then the infrequent cheat meal or down day won't noticeably affect your overall well-being. It doesn't need to inspire punishment either, as long as you know that after your day of today, it's straight back into the rituals that keep you in tip-top shape tomorrow morning, then you'll be fine. Do remember to stay in control and be rational and sensible though. I'm talking about occasional breaks from your regimen. After all, it's the 80-20 rule, not the 60-40 rule.
With this principle in mind, you might want to consider giving yourself access to some form of weekly treat. This gives you the opportunity to fully concentrate on your fitness, health, and wellness for six full days a week without it seeming utterly relentless, all the while knowing that you have earned your day off when it arrives. I've been recommending this concept to my clients for more than a decade, so from experience, I can categorically tell you that it works. Above all, I want you to never forget that life is meant to be enjoyed. You're not built to live a sedentary, overwhelmed, highly stressed out life just to be able to pay your bills at the end of the month. What would be the point of that? Imagine reaching your 90th birthday and looking back on a lifetime filled exclusively with days such as that. What a shame that would be. I'm not suggesting that you start writing a letter of resignation to your boss right now and set sail around the world on the first ship out of the port. I'm just reminding you that there's much more to life than that, and you should take every opportunity you can. In fact, more than that, you should create every opportunity you can to find something you enjoy doing and do it as often as possible. Maybe it's something creative or a new hobby or an old sport. Go and have fun with it. If you're listening to yourself and to others and acting on what you hear, and if you're sitting here reading this saying to yourself, I'd love to, but I'm too old, too busy, or not good enough at it, then stop introducing unnecessary limiting fear into your mind. You don't have to prove anything to anyone. If you're 50 years old and you remember how much fun you had playing tennis 30 years ago, then go play tennis. If you'd love to strum a guitar for the first time or turn your hand to poetry or art, then do it. Find a club or a class or just make use of the amazing world of the internet at your fingertips and leap in. The only judge that matters is yourself. What's stopping you? However you choose to have fun, I want to reiterate the importance of also getting outside of life's boxes and into nature. Regularly stepping outside has significant benefits, particularly if you're feeling stressed out or if you are in a negative emotional space. Fresh air and, if you can get it, sunlight are healing for the body and mind. You're designed to move, so make the most of that requirement and get out of your building, van or car every day. Go for a walk in the local park and notice the growing of the grass from day to day. Walk to a cafe with friends as a lunchtime treat. Pump up the tires on your bike and pedal around some quiet streets or paths, taking in whatever you see on your journey. Getting outdoors and feeling the movement of air on your skin will give you an instant energy boost and lead you to a more balanced body and mind. Even if it's raining or cold, get outside. Dig out your umbrella, find the gloves and scarf tucked away in your closet and get out there. As your mum may have said to you more than once, you won't melt. Keep growing. Make sure you get a full night's sleep every night. It's common to believe this always means a regimented eight hours shut-eye, but in truth, everyone's unique and there isn't an exact perfect formula for each person. Some people just need six hours a night, whereas some top athletes swear by turning in at exactly 8.30 p.m. every day and getting a full 10 hours rest. The key is to make sure you get what you need and no less, so that you can wake up feeling rested and recharged in the morning. Be honest about it and don't try to convince yourself that you can get away with less. Many people badly underestimate the importance of getting the right amount of sleep to achieve their peak performance. A lack of rest affects your mood and your energy levels, your body fat levels, and your ability to stay in good physical shape. For instance, while you sleep, 
your body produces growth hormone to restore and rejuvenate every cell and muscle that you use throughout your day. If you don't sleep long enough, then you don't get the full benefit of this nocturnal repair service and, over time, the diminished results affect your capabilities. Be conscious of what you're doing before you go to bed too. Help your mind unwind and begin to switch off by staying away from computer and phone screens late in the evening. You may be aware of times when you've experienced lying down on your bed and switching off the light only to spend the next hour staring at the ceiling with your mind racing at a thousand miles an hour wondering why you can't get to sleep. Your brain is just like a computer. It needs to follow a shutdown process. So give it time to do that. Clearly, responding to emails or reading the latest downbeat news headlines just before trying to get a good night's sleep isn't going to help that process. And according to a number of recent studies, the type of light emitted by modern computer and phone screens compounds that problem. Without proper restful sleep, even as you start your day, you wake up feeling stressed. Overnight, your mind and body should be doing the opposite and completely de-stressing so that you wake up feeling refreshed. If you imagine starting with an empty bucket, during the day, you may find that each stress-causing event or thought fills the bucket with a little more stress. During sleep, the bucket should be emptied and most of the contents poured away. But if your sleep is disrupted, the bucket doesn't get emptied properly and you begin the day with stress already inside. If this happens repeatedly, then the starting point of your stress level in the bucket gets higher and higher each day until eventually there's no more room and your stress spills into the world and people around you. Stress is a significant contributing factor to health issues and weight gain and it is to be avoided as far as possible. Starting your day stressed will negatively affect your behavior throughout the day ahead and encourage you to seek out quick comfort fixes like caffeine, sugar, junk food and alcohol in an effort to kickstart your energy levels. Of course, once this happens, all you're doing is adding to the downward spiral. So the message is clear. Sleep well. As the saying goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. To that end, it's really important to find a way to challenge yourself every single day. That might be through a single small action for the day or by working on part of a much longer term strategy. Whatever you choose, you must constantly push yourself beyond your comfort zone because it's the only way to become adaptable enough to face everything that comes your way. The only way to keep evolving. Don't be afraid of failure either. I'll tell you now that sometimes you're going to fail. Everyone does, and that's fine. Putting yourself out there might seem like a scary thought, but generally, what is it that you're afraid of? Fear of failure is one of the biggest reasons for people refusing to stray outside their comfort zone. Yet as long as you're prepared to dust yourself down, learn from what happened, and walk forward once again, your failure is likely to improve you and you'll still be growing. So, learn to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Of course, if you're happy to just be mediocre, then continue to do only the ordinary. But I very much doubt you're listening to this book about the principles of peak performance if you're prepared to settle for average anonymity. So, in a world where change is the only constant, look for the extraordinary within you. Aim for an outstanding life and keep moving forward. One of my strongest philosophies is that knowledge is power. So always be a student of life. 
take the time to read as much as you can, whatever that is. You don't have to start with a brief history of time. Think about the subjects that interest you most. It doesn't matter what they are, there will be vast quantities of books on them. Go to a library, a bookshop, or browse online and find a few that seem to speak to you and get reading. You remember all those workouts you did earlier that helped you improve your physical health? Reading is exercise for the mind and will help you stay mentally sharp. Not only that, but by absorbing words and language in this way, you will widen your vocabulary and heighten your IQ, ultimately providing you with a greatly enhanced, more fluent power of expression and influence that will increase your confidence. Put love first in your life. Everything in the world is energy. So the more you can let go of hate and resentment, the greater space you'll have in your life for love. This is unquestionably a good thing. By being able to love fully, openly and unconditionally, you'll not only improve your relationships with all the people around you, you'll also radically transform your relationship with yourself. This is the most important relationship there is. If you're serious about setting out on a path to becoming the very best version of yourself, then you need to learn to love you first. For some people, this is a very hard first step. It isn't a change you'll make overnight. It'll take plenty of practice, but you must keep at it by growing your self-compassion, your kindness, and gentleness. Alongside this, be prepared to act in service of others. True happiness and fulfillment doesn't stem from acts of selfishness. They are born out of contribution and assistance to those who you love. By not grasping the opportunity to become the very best version of yourself, you're doing both yourself and those around you a disservice. What you can offer and share with those is unique and in great demand. Without it, the world is a poorer place and you are less fulfilled. So make the effort to always exist with purpose and enrich lives in the process. Be prepared to wake up every day with passion to jump out of bed and say, I love you, to yourself and everyone else, to fuel your body and mind with life-giving energy, and to focus on all the amazing things you already have in your life and all the incredible things that you still have left to achieve. Whether it's good or bad, don't let your past define you. Your story is being written right now by you. What is it that you want to create in the universe? What legacy do you eventually want to leave behind? These are the forward-facing questions that keep you aiming in a positive direction. But don't fall into a common trap. When focusing on what you want, it can be very easy to be bogged down in the how of it all. How creates inertia. If you spend too long fixating on the how, your fear will kick in and you'll stay forever in your comfort zone. The question you should be asking yourself instead is why. Why makes things happen? The world is full of unbelievable discoveries because of people who ask why first and worry about how later. Whether that's twisting tons of metal and building monster engines in order to fly like a bird, enabling a person to take their first steps on the moon, or living as a South African prisoner for 27 years before becoming the nation's president. These are all examples of humans making the seemingly impossible possible. Just like them, if you desire change, and if your why is strong enough, the how will take care of itself. Now it's your time. These 10 principles of peak performance are true, 
tried and tested over a decade and more of my work as a high-performance coach and strategist with a wide range of clients. If you follow them closely with honesty and patience, then over time they will provide you with the success you want across all areas of your life. If it hasn't already been obvious to you through the course of this book, then let me make one crucial point absolutely clear. All 10 steps I describe are entirely useless unless you yourself are prepared to take action. Knowing and not doing is exactly the same as not knowing at all, except with more guilt. You must be ready to participate in your own transformation. So what are you waiting for? Get started without any more delay. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is this very moment right now. Need a helping hand with getting off the ground? If you want to evaluate and analyze your current life performance level, then head over to my website right now, jeanpierdevilliers.com, and complete the free peak performance indicator. Go for it. To your success, health, and happiness.